I'm feeling excited, obviously. We want to get this out to the world, and that's why we're here today, and that's what we're going to do. OK, mate, we've got to smash this now. Bang. We're very confident about the product and about our ability as well. The pumped-up pair... It's going to do this, man. ..have their sights firmly set on one particular dragon. We feel that we could work best with, with, with Deborah, really, and, and hopefully we make an impression on her. Here we go. The little dragon opened his eyes. <gasps> the sun was high up in the sky. He jumped straight out of bed, put on his socks, then raced out of the door as fast as he could, joining his friends on their way to the Dragon Academy. Welcome to Yapbox, the future of reading for children. We're here today to ask for an investment of uh, £100,000 uh, in return for 5% equity in the company. Uh, with me is Ben, the founder of the Yapbox app, and my name's Lee, and I focus on the marketing and communication for the business. So Yapbooks is a first-to-market, voice-enhanced reading and learning app for children, encouraging them to read stories aloud, triggering animations and sound effects perfectly in time with their words and imagination, creating a much more interactive reading experience for thousands of children worldwide. So I started Yapbooks to help my son with his speech development, creating a simple prototype where he could see a response to his words by being able to trigger animations on voice. And this helped to encourage his speech, giving him the confidence to read aloud. And now Yapbooks is making a big impact on the edtech sector, earning itself five prestigious awards in its first year. Now we intend to monetize our product through the introduction of in-app book purchases, book vouchers, and reading subscriptions for homes and schools. And that's why we're here today, to ask for your support and investment in order to get this out to as many different children as we can. Thanks for your time. A voice-enhanced reading app for children is the offering from Ben Ridgway and Lee Johnson, who are seeking £100,000 in return for a 5% share in their company. So how will the duo's attempt to synthesise screen time with study sit with multi-millionaire mum, Sarah Davies? Ben, Lee. Hiya. Hiya. My thing with my six-year-old is I struggle to get him to concentrate. And I really would struggle with him concentrating on the words and not what was going on on the screen. Have you had that feedback much? You'd have to, have to ask a kid, really, whether they oh, I'm enjoy I'm sure that, yeah. my because... six-year-old would love to do that. Well, that... But, I mean, Craig, it takes know... us half an hour to get through a 20-page book as it is. You know, we could be there all night. Yeah, yeah. Well, leave, leave them alone with it. They'll do it themselves and you'll get the report. Kids are hooked on these things. And it's not only about the book, it's about what new value this brings. So how can we increase comprehension? We can show them animation, we can show them a different unfolding of a story. So we can create smarter kids. So these children that are watching YouTube and sat and watching video after video, they've got that educational purpose to it now. And also there's no cheating with it as well. They don't get that animation and reward until they do the hard work of reading. And that's the right way around of doing learning. Ben and Lee believe that technology could hold the key to transforming reluctant readers into lifelong lovers of literature. But Tuka Suleiman is focused less on words and more on numbers. So as far as your accounts are concerned, have you done a full year? We're pre-revenue launch in January. So your pre-revenue valued at how much? Two million. Yeah. It's a bit spicy, as I call it. <laughs> We're looking at a marketplace of 4.5 million children in the UK. We're aiming to get to 5% of that, and I feel that we can get to that because we have a unique product in the marketplace. And your revenue model? Well, our revenue model is subscriptions. And what do you think a parent will pay? 3 99 for a single reader subscription and 7 99 for a family. But as a family, do I expect my child to continue month after month after month after month reading this way? Or do I want them to move on to reading a normal book out loud? Yeah. Which means after I've had the child do it for a month, two months, three months, I'm going to unsubscribe. 
No, I don't. I, why, why would you well, do that? Because I'm now putting them on the journey to picking up a proper book. I completely understand what you're saying, that children... And we know that, that children will progress on to older books and start reading, you know, traditional books or, or, or e-books if they need to. But we can put bigger books in there, you know, for older children. You know, there's a possibility to do that. Okay. In your financial model, what's the lifespan of a subscriber? Primary age children. How which many? No, 4.5 no, million no, that's, in the not, UK. that's your target audience. What's your lifespan of a subscriber? So, our number is based on what we provide in the curriculum. So, we provide books from four up to eight. What that is, goes through early What years. is the number? I Just give me the number. The lifespan of a subscriber in your business model. Five years. You just made that five years up, didn't you? Well, it's dependent on the content that we are putting in. We're, we're, we're covering no, yeah, the primary... You did, you yeah, did, you did. didn't you? <laughs> Literally. You just went, Ben. Five years? The dragons have never been fans of fairy tales, and Deborah Meaden believes that Ben has strayed into the realm of fiction. Now, Tej Lalvani wants to discover more about the duo's plans to make mastering your ABCs an investment opportunity with the X Factor. Ben and Lee, I think it's a good product in emerging technology. The experience is immersive, which is, which is good. But you've not got sales through it, though. We've not monetized the product yet. We've, we've had interest and we've had people sign up, but as yet, we've had no um, in-app purchases. Lee, you said you got people signed up. We've got 70,000 70, users on the platform. How many of the 70,000 are active users? So we've got 3,000. Guys, I've been on the fence, and you've just said something which made my decision for me. So you've got 70,000 people have access to this for free, and less than 5% of those are making use of it. So that makes me think about, well, what proportion of these people are going to use it if they're paying 3 99 That statistic for me was the, I'm off the fence and not on the side that you wanted me to be on. So I'm okay. going to say those words. Yeah, that's fine. I'm out. Ben and Lee have lost their first dragon, as the low take-up rate on their free samples causes Sarah Davies to decline the deal. The pair have already succeeded in making an impression on their dragon of choice. But will she share their vision for the future of learning? This is clearly the way things are going to be going anyway, because whether we like or we don't, children are spending more time on screens. So I'm kind of bought into the idea. The question is, is this the one? My kid's a brilliant reader now that we've done this. But if we can do that and we can encourage children to read, what parents is going to want to better their child's future? So, um, why are you still pre-revenue? I've held back on rushing it to market, to, to starting to monetize it. Uh, because I think when you have a product that doesn't fail, it's going to, um, we're going to get attraction quicker. Ben, I need to stop you you're going into sale, you're, you're, you're moving into sales mode, which is not surprising, it's your product, you're very um, passionate about it. But when does the button get pressed? When are you going to take your first pound? Tomorrow? Oh, no, you just did that thing you did to Theo earlier. I mean, no. it's ready. What I'm trying to say is it's ready. No, We've put the time no. in. Different question. I get it's ready. When do you take your first £3.99? You said January. Tuka, January, Tuka, January, Tuka, can you I just... Know. Tuka, I don't want your answers. To, I don't want to know what... He, I want Ben to answer a, listen, I'm a straight to, I'm question. I'm trying to say, look, what I'm trying to say, tell you is technically that product is ready. But if we just plan it properly, yes, January. Ben, I've got to tell you, when you go back into the big wide world, you're going to have to learn how you present to an investor and they don't just want the shiny answer. They want to understand the actual path. And you haven't really put that across to me today. So I'm afraid I won't be investing. I'm OK, out. thank you. OK, thank you. A second dragon bows out as Ben's failure to give chapter and verse on the business 
prompt Deborah Meaden to read the Riot Act. Will Tej Lalvani be prepared to prioritize a promising piece of tech over an imperfect pitch? Guys, I really think you've got a good product here and I think it can do really well. It's a shame because I just think you guys haven't represented yourselves good enough coming here. So, unfortunately, I'm going to say I'm out. I'm dyslexic. So, for me, my saviour was as soon as computers came out, I learned to program because I could use them to get over my limitations. So, I actually like the idea of the product. But frankly, I can't just give you £100,000 because I like the product. You've got a muddled business plan, you contradict yourselves, and I'll be trusting you to run the business. What you're seeing is, is crea creative people here that know how to create products for children. And with the right people involved, we can get this to a mass market. I am going to stick to my principles because I think you're going to be high maintenance. I don't have to spend too much time, which I can ill afford. I can afford the money, but I cannot afford the time. And for that reason, regretfully, I'm going to say I'm out. Four dragons have closed their books on a deal. The entrepreneur's hopes now rest solely with Tuka Suleiman. Has the high street high roller read between the lines to reveal an opportunity others have missed. Guys, I've listened to everything, and the big thing you've all missed out is retail. Because I see the vision in a way to build a product that's physical in their homes and they use every day. It, whether it's a lullaby to put their baby to bed, you know, or whether it's whatever. You know, that's my vision. So I'm going to make you an offer. But it comes at a price. I'll give you all the money, but I want 25%. Do you want to have a chat about it? Yeah, sure, sure, yeah. Okay, yeah. okay just one second. A £100,000 offer for Ben and Lee. What do you think? What do you think? Albeit in exchange for five times more equity than the 5% share the pair were originally looking to give away. <clears throat> Thanks for your interest, obviously, in the, in the products. Uh, but I think, uh, at this point, we'll, we'll refuse the investment. Fine. On that basis, I'm out. Well, I appreciate being time. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Amazing. Thank you. Ben and Lee's reluctance to shake on a deal has written off the prospects of a dragon investing in their reading app. Despite a late plot twist courtesy of Tuka Suleiman, the story of their visit to the den doesn't end with a happily ever after. Got to remember that sometimes we see differently than a dragon. Obviously, these things can go as you plan or not as you plan you know, depending on what happens in the day and how the conversation goes. If you come in with a two million valuation pre-revenue asking for hundred grand, I think that's absolutely the sort of discussions they need to be prepared to have with investors. The offer was just not really in the ballpark of where we wanted to be. We know that voice technology is growing and developing and we know we can take this far um, without a dragon's involvement. <laughs>